Well, hello there. My name is HW, and thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. Dudes, working on the Stew G pack today with Stew, and um, it is a, a brisk 36 degrees outside. It's about uh, 6.30 in the morning, and uh, man, there are so many cool amps in this, uh, in this, in this uh, little studio over here. And they're just killer. I gotta show you these. You gotta see these. They're, they're just so many killer amps. Check these out. There's some really cool amps here right now. Suze, how cool are these amps? They are infinitely cool. Hey Stu, how cool are these amps? How cool are your amps? <laughs> as cool as they can be. <laughs> 90s era Korg Vox. Yeah, so this is a AC30. Uh, got this when we first, when Delirious first started um, touring in the US. Uh, it's probably around 97. Um, so brilliant amps. I went to the Marshall factory where they were making these and uh, met Jim Marshall. So that's a great little part of the story. But these are really awesome AC30s. And then we, this is the same era, uh, Blues Break every issue. Uh, just a brilliant amp. Um, so I was using that with the Mesa Tremor Verb, which was over, over the back there, um, which is also a great amp. And um, yeah. Yeah, so this is a part 50 watt combo, 2 by 12 with reverb. Um, so a little story was that uh, Jim Marshall was distributed by a certain company and they were restricting what he could make. And so he made, uh, so obviously Marshall is his last name and uh, Park is his wife's last name. And so he, he kind of like tweaked the circuits a little bit and um, uh, started selling them through a shop in Birmingham, in the UK. And so, uh, so that's the story there. But, I did um, not know that's where he got the park name. Yeah. That's a cool piece of trivia. Yeah, yeah great thing about this amp, it's kind of like a JMP in some ways, uh, but it has the uh, the inputs linked already. Sure. Uh, which is really cool. And, um, and it has a reverb on it, which is also really cool. Um, has uh, G12Ms in there. And I think this one is from uh, mid 70s, possibly 76, uh, maybe a bit later, but. And those are like, those are, black back celestians and they're original yeah they sound great yeah yeah they're really incredible they sound really good it's my favorite amp and yeah. uh um uh, a, a cool thing about it is on on the volume on the gain um it has a, a resistor in place um so that like from zero to 12 it's kind of like real um it's almost ac30 ish Right. Um, like bright. It, yeah, it's bright and like, honky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so I, I, I love that zone on there. But um, as we'll see in another in a, another moment, if we wind everything up to full, uh, to 10, um, then that is my glorious. Literally. Instant my glorious the, yeah. It really is. It really is. When you hear it, you, you, it's just, you yeah. get, you hear it. So uh, yeah, that's that amp. My and this favorite is amp of all time. Solid state rectifier. Solid state rectifier. Which whereas, is yeah. yeah. Whereas the the blues breaker is um, valve rectifier, and that's kind of like the main difference between the two. So it's a little tighter, uh -huh. like immediate response. So you know what I find with a lot of amps is that um, uh, you you turn them on and there's a sound that works, right? So it's kind of. But a lot of things are a lot of amps are pretty generic in in terms of how they sound and um, and there are a few you come across over the years it's a little bit like guitars picking up a guitar and when you play it for the first time and you think oh that's my guitar or you think oh, I don't really like this you know so um, when this turns on for me and my ears um, it's just really special it's just got something to it that yeah is uh, awesome so this, 50 watt JMP yeah 973 um this uh and this cab um it was uh on the the last tour um uh, with delirious that i did probably the last few couple of years that that we had it but this partnered with the park is like my favorite rig of all time um this obviously a 4 by 12 has a lot more bottom end in it and so um which incidentally is why we put the the, the low cut switch on the kilt pedal um, mm. for, for cabs like just this. to fight against the low end yeah the, yeah sure yeah so but yeah a little thing we used to do with this um, is that we used to take a line out from the back put it in a DI box and um, 
mix the direct signal yeah. in with the um, in with the mic'd up versions for um, for like the real punky stuff, like uh, the sort of more blur, yeah. you know, song two type thing. Yes, this is my favorite. This is maybe the most like it's. This looks how a 62 Vox from your dreams would look. Like it's just the right amount of beat up and, and the grill cloth is just hanging like on. just hanging on. It's almost, <laughs> look at this thing. This is like an original 1962 AC30. This is like, if you played this in church, I mean, the heavens would just open. <laughs> I mean, it would just- <laughs> yeah, like open heaven right it would just, it would just, it'd be too much. Yeah. It would. And you, people would think that the uh, the cloud had come, but actually it's the smoke because it gets so hot. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, this thing is like molten lava hot. I almost burned myself. I did burn myself on it yesterday. But even the wood is hot. Just the whole, I mean, we had it on for yeah. a couple of, I mean, hours. You know, it was three, four hours. And it the whole thing is hot. It's really, it's probably dangerous, but that <laughs> might be what makes it sound really good. And you've had a lot of these converted, right? From, yeah. from, uh, yeah, you just know, from the Queen's power. That's right. Yeah. To uh, to the Yankee power. Right? <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. But um, you made a comment to me yesterday about the difference. Yeah, you know, it's it's more feeling than hearing. But um, yeah. you know, the power in the UK with it being um, 50 hertz and 230 volts, um, it does feel different, and um, it kind of it feels like coming home. You know, when you when you uh, put an amp on a stage in the UK, but um, yeah, this thing sounds amazing over here as well. So, I'm gonna convert my whole house uh, to to uh, to two twenty two thirty now, and uh, so I can get the proper tone yeah. from all these amps. No, this thing is beautiful. I mean, it's like it's you got to see this copper copper top, you know, panel that they talk about, and um, it's beautiful. Six input. These blues, original blues here. Which we were we were very careful with because you can't replace these, you know. But this thing, what does it sound like, Suze? Unreal. It really did sound unreal. So um, you partner it with that. Yeah, you partner it with this. This is your '66. Yeah, '66 original. Georgia. It was instant, like. Uh, oh, it's totally it was day tripper tone immediately, yeah, it, right? It, that it was is, the... yeah. It's George Harrison uh, from the '60s for sure. Yeah. And this we is. We think all original, maybe refinished. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's but, definitely had a refinish. But yeah, 66. I bought this in uh, on a shop on Sunset Boulevard um, in around 99, 2000. We were mixing Mesomorphis, the record, and uh, we had a session where we were making a track with Amy Grant in Ocean Way. And uh, yeah, I bought this then on a whim. It was just a small gig, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this, um, I'll tell you, you know, we talk about P9, we talk about uh, TV Jones pickups a lot, and um, our Filtertrons, obviously they're super hot right now um, in, uh, in rock, in pop, uh, Sunday morning stuff, but these like, I guess what do you call these, DR Mon style? What do you call these? I actually don't know. Dynasonic? Yeah, Dynasonic, the Dynasonic yeah. style. Uh, pickups that they were on a lot of the DR mod guitars, but it's got me thinking because these things sound really great. They do really, they've, really great. They've, they've kind of got a low output now. Yeah. I don't know if it's the the, the magnets of like I don't yeah. know. I don't, I don't know the science behind yeah, yeah. it, but you know. So I, I've pulled the pole pieces up a little bit just to get mm -hmm. some a little bit more bite out of it. But um, yeah, it's really cool, really cool. So if you uh, like this amp and this guitar. The beginning of a song called "God Is Smiling Over Us." Yeah, um, yeah, that, that that one. For a solo body guitar, this thing rings out really well too. Like just yeah. you playing that, it's very loud. I've got a feeling it's, it's got chambered. Some, oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's solid, hollow here. Yeah. Uh, you've turned me on to Bill Lawrence pickups because oh, you've right, got yeah. a fantastic this Telly Bill Lawrence, yeah. right? Yeah. Your Strat. Yeah. Bill Lawrence. That's right. And these are some of the like killer sounding stuff. Yeah. This is really a monumental sounding strat. You guys will hear yeah. it in some demos and stuff coming up. But this thing sounds, it's like fat, full on the bridge, but like mm. very stratty everywhere. Yeah, it's all right. So these are um, Bill Lawrence 
I, I don't know what model they are. Sure. You know, I just know where they came from. Yeah. And, uh, um, and yeah, it sounds really fantastic. This is a 70, this 78 or 79 uh, large headstock. Yeah. Um, Fender Strat that Martin Smith bought me actually for when we were recording a record. So um, thanks, Mark. This telly uh, I bought for 190 pounds. Yeah. Um, brand new. It's a Mexican Fender. That's about a million dollars. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. No, <laughs> thanks, it's not anymore. Th thanks, Brexit. And I bought this for the second cutting edge tape, the uh, the purple tape. Yeah. So this is the guitar that was like on I Can See You Love Forever. Right. Um, stuff like that. But and then moving on, this was the sound of. Things like um, Did You Feel the Mouth Tremble? Yeah. Uh, I'm Not Ashamed is mm -hmm. all this guitar. And um, um, and so over the years, uh, it's been, as you can see from the uh, sort of fake uh, making good there, uh, it's been my Frankenstein. So for a while there, we, we, we did um, yeah, like yeah. the Detour Live. You uh, can see this little record. At 96, 97, um, I had a humbucker in there, like full on, real high output um, humbucker, and uh, so that's all over that record. But um, yeah, it's back. So these are Bill Lawrence vintage telly pickups, yeah. and it sounds fantastic. Yeah, that's a cool. That thing sounds really good too. And the mirror pick guard, it gives it more mid range. Um, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is a cool amp. Yeah, We've is. been talking a lot about this because. You know, um, it's maybe not the amp you would think would be here, but this is this is King of Fools is on it here. It is, right? yeah. So I bought this amp um, when we were recording King of Fools. Um, so everything on that record went through here, uh, as far as I was playing anyway. So yeah. if you think about Sanctify, um, Promise, um, King or Cripple, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of classic delirious tones was this amplifier and I, I personally think it's one of the best amps that uh, Mesa ever made. Um, it has a kind of a different feel to a, to a normal dual or triple rectifier for some reason. Like right. the, the vintage voicing is really amazing. Um, and uh, But then when you hit the high gain, you know, you've got that sort of Foo Fighters vibe. But, you know, so um, other notable mentions of this would be the REM Monster album and tour, Peter Buck, this was his amp on there, and um, Ed O'Brien used to use one of these in Radiohead. Um, so, yeah, you know, this is one of those amps that could be classed as um, kind of a more generic sort of sound, um, but I love it, and it's solid, and um, yeah, like 20, 22 years I've had this, and uh, it's um, still sounding amazing. This, this is kind of like the classic, yeah. um, collection if like, you like. like the that heavy we, hitters, round yeah, one. Yeah, that we're going to start with and then uh, we're going to get into the, the boutique stuff and the things that I've had made um, to take on the road. So, um, you know, notable mentions there would be um, the third power rig that I'm using right now uh, with Mark W. Smith. So we'll get around to showing you that um, yeah. later on. Yeah, totally.